Welcome back to this week's video interview. So I'm Kerry ann leader of H2 Consultancy, and this week my guest is Alan Curtis. And slightly different this week because this is more around career development, which I'm really excited to share with you as it's a lovely story. Um, and I think it's one that's going to motivate and inspire our audience. So welcome, Alan. Thank you for joining us. Thanks very much. Good to see you. Yeah, and you on a video as well, not just on uh, it's a strange. Strange, strange world that we're living in these days, but it's <laughs> yeah, kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think it's lovely. Actually, I feel a little bit closer to people to be able <laughs> to see their living rooms and see their dining rooms. Um, but I'll hand over to you. Do you want to briefly introduce yourself and then we'll jump into the questions? Yeah, fine. So um, I'm Alan Curtis. I'm, uh, I graduated in engineering with an engineering degree. Uh, seems like a long time ago now, 2006. <laughs> And, um, and I've had a, a, a pretty varied career since then, um, moving f from an engineering through operations and quality and, and ultimately into business leadership, which is, which is where I, I had my sort of passion and where my heart was set and where I ultimately mm. wanted to, to end up going. Um, so, so, you know, in a, in a very brief summary, that's, that's who mm. I am for a career and we'll get into it in a bit more detail. Yeah. Um, just, just, I am a real person. I'm, uh, I'm married. I've got three three great kids. Um, I've had the wonderful benefit of of being a homeschool teacher for the last last few months, which is yeah. uh, which is not something I intend to put on my CV. I, I don't think it's been my strongest <laughs> hour, but uh, it's definitely been a, an experience for us all to you know look back yeah. on in the future years. Do you know what? I wonder how many people will actually pop on teacher on their CV because it has been a real job for the last four months, hasn't yeah. it? You know, we've yeah. we've lived and breathed it. I'll, yeah. I look forward to the term ending when I can uh, when I can put the books away and I can give the legitimately let them have six weeks off. Definitely, I think we're going to give George maybe five weeks off. <laughs> I think we uh, well, I think we're going to cut it on the 29th of July. Um, that's been the agreement. That's he really seems good. quite happy. And between now and then, I think I need to buy myself a teacher's gift. That's fair, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, too right. Absolutely yeah. right. But yeah, you, you touched on it then, and that's part of the reason I wanted to invite you on because obviously we work with a number of engineers and one of the questions we're often asked is how they could tr transition into leadership and senior management roles and that's exactly what you have done. Um, so I'm really glad that you're here to share it because sometimes people need a real example, you know, to see actually that someone that's relatively young as well in his career has managed to transition from a graduate right the way through. So should we jump in? Yeah, uh, you know, I was an engineer. I I, I, um, I did okay at maths and science at school. That was that was where I was I was kind of strong and and yeah. sure any any other guidance, I was um, steered into into an engineering route. In fact, my my parents were both accountants and and you know they worked with numbers. And up until I was about sixteen, I thought, well, because I'm good at maths, I'll I'll go and be an accountant. But actually, you know, I've literally just thought he could have gone down the accountancy route. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to offend any accountants that may be listening, but I did <laughs> I, I did some work experience, uh, well, plenty of work experience in the summers with my parents in their accountancy firm, and it yeah. was just boring. <laughs> and um, and what really what really excited me about engineering was the application of all this stuff. Yeah. So, so off I went to university, and I, I went to I went to Loughborough. I was I was really pleased to go to Loughborough as a as a, as a renowned engineering institution. Mm. I did five years there, and it was great. I loved every single bit of it. And you know, when I graduated, I was toying with the idea: should I stay on and do a PhD and carry on, carry mm. on, really, really get into it in detail? But the you know, I, I was fortunate enough to have um, to have a relationship with a company that I went into. Uh, they took me on as a graduate in, 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 a, yeah. in a really quite exciting part of their business, um, uh, doing some really high technical development, which was really exciting. And, and for me, it gave me the opportunity to carry on that passion I had for engineering yeah, of course. In, a, in a business world. And I loved it. Um, I loved it. And I did my chartership. I became chartered. And, you know, I got, the, got all the stamps I needed to be an engineer. Mm. But, but after two, maybe three or four years after graduation, I, I don't think it was a, like a light bulb moment. Um, I don't remember, you know, it being like one day all of a sudden I had this unique yeah. moment. But, but over, over a period of time, I realized this isn't actually, you know, where I see my career going in the future. And I kind of pictured out where, where it could take me. Mm -hmm. And 
And I could probably have followed that route through and I could have become a, a, a very senior engineer, a chief engineer or yeah, even, you know, an engineering leader. Yeah. But that isn't, that, at, at that time, it wasn't what excited me. And at that time, I thought, I thought hard and long about it. And, and, and what I wanted to do was I wanted to become a business leader. I wanted to run a business. I wanted to, I wanted to see all elements of it, of which, you know, engineering was just a bit. Yeah, of course. Um, and, and so I told some people. And I think that probably one of the, you know, the first things for me to get across is that in my early days, and probably at this stage I was, you know, in mid-twenties, I got some airtime with some very senior people in the company mm. and and I told them what my vision was and what my aspiration was. And I, I love think, that. Love that. Mm. I think it was it was you know, probably in hindsight it was maybe a little little naive of me, but I think it was probably one of the one of the best things I did in my early career. Mm. Um, because you know, I, I was in this place where I was doing well, I was successful, and I wanted to get somewhere, and I had no idea how to get there. And very shortly after I'd had some of those conversations, and you know, I put some time frames to it, and the yeah, time frames probably weren't yeah. about right, and, and I got some counsel and some coaching about, you know, have you considered this and what about that? And, but I got, I ultimately got a phone call completely out of the blue that said, um, how do you fancy moving to a completely different part of the company to do yeah. something completely different? And given the conversations that I'd had with them, I, I, I said, yeah, and I, and I was going straight for it. And I didn't know what I was going to. Mm. And it was a quality engineer's role. Um, and I knew nothing about quality. Um, I knew nothing about, you know, quality in this, in this business, quality was about the production line. It was about issues to do with the build, to do with the supplier, to do with the competitor. Right, okay. I had no experience in that. You know, I was an engineer. I was I was good with numbers. I was I was, you know, technically very strong. And but but this was a this was a different world. Mm. And so, but 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 I said yes, thanks very much. And I went in, and I, and I can remember being really welcomed by the team, but thinking, flipping out, what am I going to do here? <laughs> and I took the the I took what I could do, what I knew, which was strong. Uh, numerical skills mm. and out data analysis, technical uh, uh, technical problem solving, and all that sort of stuff. And I took it in, and very, very, very quickly, I was able to make a huge difference in this business yeah. because I was bringing a new skill set, a new way of looking at things that they'd never seen before. Because typically, you know, the people that were doing these sort of jobs had been people that had progressed through their career from a shop right, floor okay. position up into through a team leader and supervision type roles into this into this position so they were they have very good product knowledge but mm -hmm. they didn't have the the you know the 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 academic side and the and the you know the intellectual and the technical capability to, to go and drive yeah. so i was able to make some some real difference really really quite quickly and it was off the it was off the back of that probably a couple of years later i was then offered my first quality manager's position and I, and I was I still had this vision of of running a business. That was what I wanted yeah. to do. I at no point in my career have I ever ever said to anybody I want to be a quality manager. It, mm. it, it didn't. It, and 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 even now I've been through that. I've done quality manager. I've done it several times. I like to think I did an okay job at it. Yeah. But that was never ever that was never ever something I wanted to do. Mm. You know, it was it was. It was part of the journey. It's to say it was part of the path, wasn't it? To, to for the way for you to get. And yeah, I, exactly. you know, I was fortunate that somebody put put me on that path to start with. But I, I, I do kind of feel that if that first role I was put into hadn't been in quality, but it had been in manufacturing engineering, or if it had been in logistics or or something, yeah. I, I think ultimately I probably would have ended up in the same place. It was just where I started and, and the sort of journey I went through. Yeah, and I think as well, though, it's part of that I told somebody. I love how you said that at the start, because that's what it's about, isn't it? Especially if you are going into a graduate scheme or going in in a, in a trainee capacity, you've got to tell people what you want. I think if you stay quiet, a business is going to presume that, you know, you might just follow a, a traditional track. Whereas if you speak up like you have, I've got a passion for this. That, I think that's important. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I agree. Uh, I agree, Kerry. And, and, uh, and I think that, you know, one thing that we've got to be really careful of in today's society and, and you know, something that maybe we, we could touch on a bit later or, or another time is, is about developing young people because that's really, mm -hmm. really, really important to me. Yeah. Um, 
and one of the, you know I, I, I love doing it and I think it's really important but one of the, one of the things that I have to say time and time again to young people people that are graduating is you know don't expect if you want to if you want to do this big job that's fine mm. if, if you've got the capability yeah. but don't expect to have it tomorrow and don't expect to be given given it to you and and you know I always gotta say work hard got to work hard I always say things like you know you you've got to do 90% of this mm. you've got to work you've got to you've got to do the development the personal development the network and you've got to get these skills you've got to get the results and I if agree. you do all that and then you need somebody else to help pull you the extra 10% okay. then guess what that's what we'll do for you yeah but don't don't think well i'll do 10% and i'll do it for a year and tick tick the box and therefore expect something great because that just isn't in my experience how it, how it works yeah and, yeah i agree so so i've always you know i've always had this i always had this vision of where i wanted to get to uh, and like i say in the early days i probably put, tried to put a timeline to it but ultimately that timeline sort of disappeared because i just knew that if i kept on doing what i needed to do in the job i was in mm. displaying the characteristics i thought were the right characteristics and ultimately you know prove myself then, mm. then that opportunity would come yeah and I, and you know i um I took a big, big, big quality role within within the company, um, and it was a it was a it was a horrific role. Was it to start with? Mm. Because the business was in a was was in all sorts of uh, problems, mm. quality problems, and and there was no way of dealing with it. And and it was a really really intense period, and it happened to coincide with the with the birth of my third child. And oh, so, you know, I had no, I had, I had. Um, you know lack of sleep and i had loads of work to do and all mm. this sort of stuff but, but ultimately what made me successful in that role was i turned it from being a quality manager's position which which it was and and into a leader's into a leadership position right okay and 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 i didn't do that consciously it, mm. it just kind of happened and i guess that maybe that's uh, that's that's because that's who i am i think but, so definitely i'm not sure other people might necessarily they might find it too hard or fail at it whereas you saw it as an opportunity to actually work yeah. with it to make it right you know yeah and I, you know I, I decided if i was going to be successful in this role i needed to put structures in place i needed to put strategies in place i needed to have vision i needed to tell again you know once once i'd done the hard work of working out what i thought we needed to do mm. the next thing was about telling people this is what we're doing and this is how we're doing it and people didn't yeah. believe me at first because it because people have been there and tried before but i kept on telling them and i kept mm. on relenting with it and ultimately ultimately we got the you know we got the successes and we got the results and it was that yeah. you know pe people people came back and said you told us you were going to do it oh well, yeah i did because that you know that was mm. the vision and that was the, that was the, that was the plan and that was the that was the sort of leadership i put put into it uh, which is why I, I then got you know got approached to to go and uh, do a business leadership role so I know obviously leadership is something you're very passionate about. Mm. But would you, the previous role then that you've just been talking about, mm. would you say that's like a defining moment in your career? I think then? it was. You know, there was, there was some. There, yeah, there was, it was a it was a pivotal moment for me. You know, I, it's it's. I mean, I've got I, there's a few funny stories I can tell really, but and I'll tell you two of them just 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 briefly. <laughs> one one, <laughs> one of them one of them is that I'd been offered this job six months previously right and, and i had prepared as hard as i possibly could for this conversation about this job because mm. i knew what was coming and i prepared as hard as i could to say actually i don't want it wow and because and the reason the reason i did that was because i saw it as absolutely nothing but setting me up for failure right okay i didn't think there was any way i could succeed the state this business was in this the, mm -hmm. this operational facility was in the quality problems they had the people that they had there the attitude the, the the culture and all that sort of stuff i did not see that there was a way to success and so i prepared myself probably semi-consciously and semi-subconsciously to say look if you want if you want me to do it and you're telling me to do it then that's fine i'll go and i'll and i'll do give it my best shot but i if you're asking me if i want it absolutely no chance yeah and and guess what i heard nothing and six months later, I was around six months later. I was offered the, the conversation again. Right. And you know okay. what? Probably one of the biggest, biggest, one of the biggest funny moments for me is that, um, it, is that uh, authenticity. Right. Okay. That honesty 
and and I went back and it was the same guy and I said you know what I got it wrong last time wow you know if if the business was still in the same position but I, but but instead I said if ever there is an opportunity for me to prove myself mm-hmm. this is it this is yeah. it this isn't an easy gig this is mm. something which is gonna which is gonna absolutely challenge me you know and I'd be a fool to turn it down and, yeah. and that was you know that and I I always remember that conversation I'm still in touch with the with the guy now because that was really important for me to you know it was a, it was a big learning piece for me to think actually I've done the wrong thing here mm. and what I've learned since then is that, that it's that challenge, that opportunity to really change things that makes me successful. Yeah. You know, if somebody offered me a role that was, you know, keep this business ticking along, it's a successful business and we don't want to grow it and we've got no problems, but, but keep it ticking along, that wouldn't yeah. excite me. That wouldn't excite you. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a saying, isn't there, that, you know, nothing worth doing is easy or, yeah. you know, kind of, if, I just think you've got to raise the bar every now and again in your career. You can't sit there and plateau, you yeah. know. Not Obviously, that's okay if that's what you choose to do. But if you're wanting yeah. to build a career in a successful business, you've got to step out of your comfort zone, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely have. Absolutely mm-hmm. have. And, and you know what? I went into it and I had this I had this, this phrase which I kept on using for the definitely for, you know, the majority of that role. And, and I said, this to do what we need to do in this business is not hard. It's just hard work. Mm. We, you know, it, it wasn't anything which needed, you know, NASA scientists to come in and, and, and fix the issues. Yeah. We, we knew what needed doing. It just needed some real structure, some real leadership, some real focus, some real dedication to make it happen. I'll come um, on to leadership then, because I think that's really important yeah, okay. for you, isn't it? So what is, in your opinion, because obviously this is all very opinion based, but yeah. as you've grown into that area and leadership is something that you're really passionate about, what's, you know, the key to successful leadership? Well, I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a million dollar it's a question, isn't it? Big question. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it is. And, and um, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a right answer, by the way, mm. you know, you, you see, and I see, and I have seen lots and lots of different leadership styles and I think that what's important you know I mentioned the word just briefly ago authenticity I think it's really I think it's really really important Mm. that and I've learned and I have learned that to be effective in my opinion you've got to be true to yourself you've got to do what Mm. you think is right not what somebody else has told you or what you've seen somebody else doing and you think well I'm going to copy that but you, you know you've you've got to be authentic and therefore you know i've seen other people do things and i thought that's good i'll try and emulate it but i'm not going to copy it Mm. i'm going to do it in my way and i'm going to put my style on it because so many times you see people trying to do things that other people have done yeah and get seen straight through and you know my style my, my style is not about you know this dictatorial approach and 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 stuff in the past, I've been um, criticised is probably the wrong word, but but it's been you know it's been mentioned you know you're, you're not you're not strong enough. So I've mm. gone out and I've tried this style, and you know what? It hasn't well, worked. Why yeah. hasn't it worked? Because the guys who are, who have worked for me who know what I'm like know that that isn't me. That's not they you. Know that you know they know that I'm doing that to, to put on a on a facade. You know, you're so right. I, I remember my first leadership role. I definitely tried to be, you know, my manager, my director. She did it and I thought she did it well. I respected her as a leader. And so I probably did emulate her style and it was wrong. And I, and I didn't win. <laughs> I didn't win any points for it. Yeah. And I certainly didn't motivate the team. And I've learned a lot over, you know, probably about a 10 year career of leadership that actually and probably say in the last three or four years, I found the right way to motivate and guide and yeah. support staff. Authenticity is so right. That's what it is. Mm. It is. So, so I think authenticity is is at the heart of it, right? Mm. And and therefore, for what 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 I think is is good and what works for me won't necessarily work for for everybody else because that wouldn't be authentic yeah. to them. So, so for me, you know, I'm about I I set very high standards. Mm-hmm um for my, for myself and for my team yeah um, but they are 
and and I, and I like to get the the buy in that they are they're ambitious, very mm. ambitious, but there is always a route to get to them. Yeah. So that motivation is, to achieve them is there. You know, yeah, and I've seen course. before targets have been put, plucked out of the sky, which there's absolutely no way to get to, and all of a sudden, it, you know, there, there is there is no motivation there to get them. So, absolutely. so it's about setting setting really really ambitious goals because that drives everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about putting people in the roles and letting them perform in their roles. Um, I like to have a, a, a strong leadership team around me, a strong management team around me, but I fully expect them to, you know, whatever their subject matter area is, that is their area. Yeah. And I respect them for what they're doing and I look to them for, to, to take the leadership. So I'm not, I'm not dictating it. Of course, I'll put my, my views in and my thoughts in and I'll give them yeah. some, some guidance. And, and, and when we come up with a strategy or a, or a, a roadmap or, or a tactical or a way of working, mm-hmm. then it's for them to go and execute. But, but my style is to coach and support them through that. And I think that, that you know, in the last maybe five, five or seven years of my career, I've really, really, really seen the value of coaching both yeah. being coached and coaching others. And yeah, because I don't think that leadership, I don't, that coaching and mentoring, it should be right, way up the top too, all the way down. It's a waterfall, isn't it? You yeah, know, it, it shouldn't just stop because you become, let's say, a general manager. You know, your your time of learning shouldn't stop, should it? You know? No, and, and, and you know, it, it's it's so rewarding. It's so rewarding to, to have somebody who you know is capable, um, who comes into your office to talk about a problem that they've got. And they don't think they've got the answer. But then at the end of at the end of the session, they go out mm-hmm. and they they absolutely it was their idea. They've got the answer. They know what they're going to do and they go and do it. Yeah. And then you can reflect on that some weeks later and you can say, you know what, what a success that's been. That that's that's rewarding in itself. And you know, you should, people really shouldn't underestimate the value of coaching. You know, mm-hmm. and being coached. And there's there's some there's some in in business definitely in operations and manufacturing. There's some negative connotations around the word coaching. Um, yeah. But 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 you know, as a as as professionals, we should stand above that, and mm-hmm. we should really understand the value of it. And and also, you know, you know, coaching and mentoring is two different things. And again, that's a, that's a whole other topic to to explore. Yeah, of but, course. But but you know, it's really value really valuable. So so giving the people the the giving them the autonomy to do what they need to do, but really then giving them the coaching support and the regular review, giving them the time, um, giving them the, you, you know, the benefit of, the, of, yeah. of, of what wisdom or guidance I, I might have to, you know, to, to support them through that, that journey. So it's really, you know, my style, like I say, is authentic, but, it, but it's, there's, 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 it's authentic to me, but there's yeah. two streams to it. One, one stream is about really, really setting a high ambitious um, targets and objectives and that sort of thing and then the other thing is about is about people it's about supporting those people developing those people and helping those people to be the very best that they can be because yeah. you know if, if if those two things are uh, are if those two things are embedded and i can do those two things well then there is no reason why i am any business that i'm in is not going to be successful because you know it's, it's got that it's got that momentum to, to drive it it's about that positive mindset as well isn't it in terms yeah. of how you transfer that over over to others and giving them the the right amount of encouragement but desire to push themselves you know we can't do it for people can we you know they've no, got to want to, they've got to have to drive and, themselves yeah I agree and, and I think you know it's it, it, what I'm not saying is what I'm not saying is that every conversation I have with people is about you know aren't you great and well done and, and yeah, and yeah. On the back. you know there are times where the conversation is this isn't good enough mm. We've spoke about this before you know better why didn't you do this etc cetera, etc cetera. that has to come into it too mm. but but there's a way of doing that and still making the people realize that 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 they are valuable and they're you know they can contribute to the to the business so you know, setting these high standards, you know, isn't just about uh, objectives and numbers and, and, and things to aim for. It's about, yeah. it's about standards in how you work and how you approach things. And, you know, I, I always say to the guys, to, to people that work for me, you know, don't, if you've got a problem with anything I've said, just come and knock on my door and let's have a, let's have a chat about it. It's, this isn't yeah. a stone. It's a, it's, you know, we're professionals here. We've got a relationship and ultimately we all want the same thing for this business. Mm. You know, so, so it's about getting that collective, that collaborative approach to really yeah. support 
people on their it's journey. Like keeping the lines of communication open because I think so many times we probably are ex or maybe you haven't experienced it because it sounds like you've been in the right business that's really pulled you through, you know, and, and you've pushed yourself through. But I know I've experienced in the past where you are more you know more dictatorship where you're told what to do you're perhaps not given the tools and then you might make mistakes along the way you know because perhaps you haven't been you haven't been guided and i think having an open door policy where people can come back and say actually alan don't agree i don't think it's working and need some more support ultimately yeah. you're going to gain their loyalty and their commitment and they're going to be on track to support the business objectives and and, and you know you've you've touched on something there about about making mistakes you know i've got a i've got a phrase that goes something along the lines of you know you make a mistake once and we'll sort it out make the same mistake twice then we've got a problem yeah and 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 you know that, that that's a philosophy that i really believe in because people mm -hmm. are people at the end of the day and if people make a mistake then you know there are mo there aren't very many occasions where this the mistake can't be rectified in some way yeah um but but the most important thing is that we all learn from those mistakes and we don't do the same thing again and and what i you know what i got, got some real satisfaction out of is is you know there's one guy who, who i'm thinking of at the moment who who did make some mistakes mm -hmm. and I think it was probably, like you say, it was probably because of because of previous experiences, scared to confront them, scared to admit and op open up to them. Yeah. And that was a problem in itself. But when he did, and we spoke about them, he, you know, he was really quite motivated in the fact that, you know, this isn't this isn't me just gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get fired off the back of it, and I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna get chastised for it. Somebody here is supporting me and trying to get through. And I think my role as a as a leader is 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 is, is about doing that and protecting the guys, and, you know. Ultimately, if I'm asking a, a, a somebody within my team to do something and they make a mistake, if it's been done with, if it's been done with uh, the right um, intent, mm -hmm. and I'll stand behind it, you know, and that that's part of my of my role as a leader to stand behind it and support them and, and help get them out of that mess. Mm. If it happens multiple times, then my role as a leader is to address that problem and, and to try and sort it out so so you know it, it is about this open culture this and but you know for me it all comes back to this people-centric thing you know mm. if you if you if, if you can instill in the people this sense of trust this sense of you know this is who i am it's genuine i'm not trying to act and be somebody that i'm not by yeah. the way i make mistakes too and yeah. i'll and i'll tell you what they are and well, because I might need your help to, to sort them out. And, yeah. and, and, and all of a sudden, you know, people realise, well, actually, you know, we're, we're all just the same. We're, we, you know, we're not robots, we're human beings. And well, I was just going to say, you know, that can, it sounds really cheesy and we use it here at H2. It's part of what we stand for. It's that human approach. I think when people realise they're dealing with a, a, a normal person, yes, you might be a very senior management member of the management team, but you're human, you've been there, you've done it, you've been in their shoes, you've worked through, and we all make mistakes, of course we do, you know, but it's how we handle them, isn't it, you know, yeah. take that human approach in business and life, and I think it makes a difference to people. Yeah. But I think that might have brought us to a nice close, I think, okay. you know, and I feel like I could talk to you forever about leadership and um, management styles. And I feel like that could be a whole different video. So perhaps we need to get you back on and we can. Yeah, well, look, it's good. I enjoy it. It's good. Yeah, it's no, I think that'd be really good. Myself. Yeah, I know yeah. you can tell it shines through. And I think, you know, obviously the next business that you move on to, well, they've got a great leader um, and someone that wants to, you know, run a business in a, a really, you know, positive and strong way. So, you know, good luck with that. I hope it yeah. works out. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much, Alan, for joining yeah. us. Yeah, it's good. And uh, it's yeah, I'll I'll keep in touch with what else I can bring you back for. Yeah, do. Um, yeah, do. Yeah, yeah it'd good. be really yeah, exciting. Yeah, but good. no, so I wish you a lovely weekend with your family. Um, and that, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Carrie. I'm great to see you. Cheers.